Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Humility of the Spirit. Humility of the Spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus. I intended to do this because I told people that many a time there are some people who have definitions about humility. Okay? And many of those definitions about humility are so human ideas about the humility in God's things than it is humility in the mind and the spirit of God. What I just want to labor to do is to open your eyes to what is the true definition of the spirit of humility. And in these few minutes that I have, I want to use very wisely to, to, to speak at a more mature place than usual. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll begin this way. Let's read Numbers chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says, And Miriam and Aram spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Have he not spoken also by us? And the Lord had it. Tell your neighbor the Lord had it. I've shared a, a sermon in this line, but today I just want to go a bit deeper, okay? Yeah, they just need to buy. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Tell your neighbor, the man Moses was very meek. What is the meaning of meek? The Bible says, above all men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and said unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Go out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And they say, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, who I, the Lord, will make thine self known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. And they say, But my servant is not so. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful and in all mine house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, when, wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Weren't you afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Praise the Lord. Let's read in the message version, from the first verse, if you will, but I'm going to read a little bit faster, so somebody will understand where I'm coming from. Miriam and Aaron talked against Moses behind his back because of his Cushite wife. He had married a Cushite woman. They say, is it only through Moses that God speaks? Does he also, doesn't he also speak through us? God overheard their talk. Continue. <laughs> now the man Moses was a quietly humble man and more so than anyone living on earth. God broke in suddenly on Moses and Aaron and Miriam saying, come out you three to the tent of the meeting and the three went out. Next line. And God descended in a pillar of a cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and he called Aaron and Miriam to him. When they stepped out, he said, listen carefully to what I am telling you. If there is a prophet of God among you, I make myself known to him in visions and I speak to him in dreams. Next slide. But I don't do that way with my servant Moses. He has the run of my entire house. I speak to him intimately, in person, in plain talk, without freedom. He ponders the very form of God. That's what I want so why did you show no reverence or respect in speaking against my servant, against Moses? Moses ponders the very form of God. He ponders the very form of God. Before I even go there, let me first open your eyes to something. As a place of humility. Never speak about any man you know as God. Can I say it again? Even if you're also a man of God, never speak about behind the back of a man who will not serve God. If what you're speaking seeks to destroy or derail or pervert or stumble or break or breach or disappoint or disregard or disrespect, never. Why? Because I told people, what was the mind to say, I shall not touch the Lord's anointed? Saul was judged by God. Okay? David, by that answer, was already a king. You understand what I'm saying? David, by that reason, already God had judged Saul. He had judged Saul. 
God was already looking at David. David was a man after God's own heart. Saul had spoiled every affair of his ministry and life. So when Saul wasted his life, one time David creeps behind when Saul was hiding behind somewhere and then he cuts the cloth. And when he cut a bit of cloth to prove to Saul how near he was to kill him, later on that wisdom told David he shouldn't have even cut that cloth. When I'm talking about that touching, he didn't blaspheme, sorry, he didn't blackmail, he didn't fight against, he didn't speak against, he only cut, David only cut a piece of his cloth and he repented. Because he was a man after God's own heart, he knew what the presence was and the price of the presence. Hallelujah. Now, because I'm ministering in this line, I'll explain to you why it's very hard for certain people to grow in their anointing. Have you ever realized there are people who dwell in this thing and we lay hands and they scream and cry and fall down and roll, but they never grow in their anointing. They can't demonstrate where they've been. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people who just by any reason or some reason, they do not grow in their anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life ought to be increasing every other day. The power of God in your life must be exemplarily increasing. There must be a step of account of you growing in God. Okay? And number one way for you not to grow in God is to disregard the anointing. And many people have learned a certain deluded thought of humbling themselves in the presence of God but disregarding those that carry the very anointing. Let me tell you, you can never receive an anointing you never respect. Can I say that again? You can never receive an anointing that you never respect. When I was in second year, I also had an anointing. Okay? I also had a power in my own thought and a certain understanding. First Isaiah came to university. He was a teacher, he was a preacher, okay? Then he shared, the power of God came upon us. And from that day, I knew that he was a man of God. Okay? And because I knew that he was a man of God, I only know one pattern and life to live after him. Never to grieve him. You understand what I'm saying? And I have to grow. Why? Because I know and have a certain respect of the anointing upon Pastor Isaiah, Buga. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I would have taken him to be my peer, because we are both preachers of the gospel. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I would have taken him to say, okay, I think he's my peer. It's like there are some people probably you can look at Pastor Mike and say, but he's younger than me. And by reason of saying, because he's younger than you, you call him Michael. You understand? I'm not saying call him King Julia community. No, we're not title people. Try to understand me. We're not title people. Okay? We're not title people. But do you know why the Bible says submit yourselves to one another? To one another. Have you noticed that many of you, Actually, I think I'll take it jokingly, but seriously, many of you, I call you apostle, prophet. Do you know I address many of you by title? I hardly address you by name. Why? Because we also must submit ourselves to one another in love. But when you see that that man has done it and it has worked, respect him. If you want to grow into that anointing. Now leave us. Because for us, even if you don't, we are already anointed. You can't take it out, okay? Some of you go in those school ministries, secondary schools, and then you preach. Let me tell you, I've seen a lot of men who can preach and not move the spirit one inch. Who can preach so deep, but not move the spirit one inch. I've seen a lot of men who have not learned the mind of the spirit. Okay? They had a few experiences by the Spirit, but they never learned the mind of the Spirit. So their kinds of ministries are occasional. Today God will move, tomorrow he won't move. 
I've seen men who don't even know how the spirit moves, but they can criticize the spirit working on the man. Let me tell you something. Some of us, this whole business of getting slain, we didn't wake up and say, let me claim you. No. For me, the moment the spirit man told me, I would shake guys' hands, touch people, and then they think I know they're falling down and scream with devils coming out of them. It's not something I pre-programmed. If it was pre-programming, then why would a man be slain for one week? What is the mind between a man being slain for one week? There are people you even live here, you think she doesn't want to go back home? Do you understand what I'm saying? She wants to go back home, but there is a power bigger. One time we went somewhere <laughs> with a certain group of people. Somebody got slain, we left them at church, at a certain church, and somebody stayed watching over them. <laughs> He left that too. Then the person woke up at about six. So the person who was watching over them came up to get them up. They also now got slain. Now the one who was sleeping at six sat up to wait for this one. <laughs> Why ain't in the mix? He had already gone. Praise the Lord Jesus. I could tell you things of the Spirit <laughs> doing things to people that I know for signs. I just know for signs. For signs. They are called signs. Hallelujah. But if you ever go in the ministry, for example, you're going somewhere. The man does not need, we're not talking about falling really, okay? Don't misunderstand me, because there's a fanaticism that cannot come after that. But there's a place where the true spirit of God can do it. Somebody told me that it's not in the Bible, I laugh. Okay? I'll prove it one day if you like. Because some people don't read. Okay? But anyway, besides that. You go to a meeting and then somebody prophesies and then you hear them prophesy accurately. From that day, don't ever regard them only as prophets. The reason as to why God preserves the anointing manifest, not resident, but manifest. There's a difference. There are a lot of people who have an anointing, but it's not manifest. They claim it's but it's not manifest. You understand? Now, there's a difference between speaking, right, from the head that knows and the spirit that has known these things, but without the affirmations of the spirit, right? Not because the spirit does not hear truth, okay? But because between the truth that is being spoken and from the source where the truth is being spoken, there's a difference. Can I give you an example? Let me give you an example. One time we had a neighbor. He beat up the house girl so badly. Then after he beat her up, the woman said, Do what you've done is not of God. And the man of God quoted the scripture. It was the truth. He said, even Jesus, when he saw funny things in the house of the father, he used violence. Now quoting a scripture. Okay? True, the scripture exists. But it wasn't the truth to beat up a woman. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't a truth to beat up a woman because you quoted the scripture, regardless of what you had done. Do you see where I'm coming from? That's why there are a lot of people who, if you want head knowledge, they have it. If you want him to preach the grace, you can preach it. If you want him to preach the spirit, you can preach it. But it's one thing to preach something you cannot demonstrate. Or it's one thing to preach somebody that can't validate himself. That is not ministry. That is just a gift. Are you hearing me? But there comes a time where the giftings of God upon your life. Work with the validations of the Spirit. And those validations of the Spirit only work with men who have had and learned to be humble in spirit. Not physical. There are many people who are proud outside, but they are very humble in spirit. And there are many people who are so humble outside, but they are very proud in spirit. How do you know the presence proves? The presence proves. 
Now we're raising ministers here who are not only just going to preach the message, but they're going to preach a message where the Spirit himself will come out from the words they speak. Are you hearing me? And he will confirm that they are so. That when they speak, somebody will feel life. They will feel life. You understand? But when they speak to somebody for days and months, somebody will say, ever since I started to listen to you, my life changed. There are many people who speak, but they never change lives. There are many people who speak, but they never keep the people. And there's a reason. It's those small things. Humility in the spirit. The first place of humility in the spirit is respecting the anointing. But also, respect the anointing that mantles men. Or the anointing on men. Because you can't say you love God whom you have not seen. When you don't love who you see. You can't say you respect God who you don't see. When you don't respect who you see. You don't break principle. That's principle. By the way, I'm still in, in nursery school because in a few minutes I'm about to go. Primary University. And then I'll finish from PhD where your brains will be damaged and then we pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you're our nature, you realize we will not tell you that that was disrespect, disrespectful. We will keep quiet and watch you <laughs> and wait. Not because we don't want to warn you, but there are some people who are teachable. They're teachable, you know. And they're unteachable, you know. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me teach you something, for example. There are people Pastor Isaiah can sit with for hours. And there are people he can't sit with. Not because he doesn't love them. But there are people he, in his mind, he knows he can't minister to. Not because he doesn't have their ministry. But because they don't see him in that light. You understand? And that happens with every man of God. But watch the people he hangs out with and watch yourself. Watch your life. Over ten years, you realize that they were better. There are certain things that you can only study by years. Some of us, by reason of experience in these things, we warn you that you mature and grow. Respect the anointing on men's lives. Even if he's not on the pulpit, even if she's just that simple girl who you go with to ministry in Buikwe, the moment you see something extraordinary on her, respect her. Respect them. He is seated here getting camera, but tomorrow he's a pastor in Ginger. You know that? Do you know that? But how many people see him as a pastor? He will tell you. I call him Seb. Sajam Kama, Seb. Why? Why do I use the word sir upon his life? Because I know what's upon him. We share the graces of the Spirit. And I must respect him if I respect what's upon him. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? The biggest place that stumbles Christians is their mouth. Some of you say too much. And many a times some people speak to be exalted above others, to become better than others. And 99% of the words spoken are wrong. 99%. Why? Because he is Satan, the accuser. Never sit in a company where they accuse a man of God. Even if he, you know, even if you never sit in a company where they accuse a man of God. I'm advising you. You don't need to take it. Praise the Lord Jesus. If we are not even accusing, who are accusing us? How about you? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Never sit in a company of a woman accused by God, by people, of a woman of God accused by anybody. That's why the Bible says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the wicked. The counsel of the wicked. The place of wickedness is slander. That's the place of wickedness. Me, I didn't say anything. I was just hearing 
How come you're the one who hears? How come it's not him who hears? You know there are people here who don't know anything about anybody. How come they, they are away from that council? The Bible says, Blessed is the man, let me show it to you, that walketh not in the council of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If you sit next to a man scorning and anointing, don't sit there. Do you understand the wisdom? You don't get it. If you sit between two people and two men start to talk about Apostle Michael, whether right or wrong, walk away. Be wise to walk away. Because if you sit in the seat of the scornful, this spirit is seeking to consume you. And long before you know it, you're worse than the person who said it first. Because you judge as well matters. And you're worse. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If something has not come to you first hand by your eyes and ears, first hand, don't ever be a second and third witness to it. Piece of advice. Okay? You know I'm saying this? Because some of you are growing up. And you'll understand. I'll give you an example. If me and Pastor Isaiah sat here to talk the things we know, <laughs> ah, you'll be surprised. We know too much. But I don't even sit in the car with Pastor Zach and tell him so and so did this. Even Pastor Zach, he doesn't hear from me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If Pastor Isaiah Pray for a lame man. I would make sure Pastor Zach knows. But if I had the Pastor Isaiah stole, I would make sure Pastor Zach doesn't know. Me, that's me. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Me, that's me. Because I'm submitted, okay? Now, I'm not seeking to scare you. I'm only seeking to grow you. But it's another thing if you sit in the seat of the scornful. I mean, if you, if you sit where the, the scorners are, then you say, ah, oh, me, I wasn't talking, I was just listening. That's why I ask Christian, is it by mistake that that rumor found you? Where did it find you? In the presence? Were you seeking the presence of God and the rumor came? Many of you who submit to me, Oh, Pastor Isaiah, you know, I call you personally. And the closest you are to me, the more I scold you. I've scolded Michael many times until he cries. Then after that, I tell him, yes. Why? Because I expect too much from you. But my scoldings with Michael are with Michael. And after scolding tonight, tomorrow morning, I tell him, get over with it. That's my you understand? The closest people to me have scored the most. Also, in my nose. I have rebuked him very openly. You understand? Then he went. Well, that was it, okay? But at the end of the day, Michael can't know what I say to Emma. Me and Emma are different. Because my business with Michael and my business with Emma are two different businesses. Okay? They can't be mixed together. Do you understand? That's why again I ask you, did the rumor find you in the presence? Were you in the presence of God? Where the Spirit of God was? And then somebody said to say, <laughs> Can you believe it? No. Simple thought. Why didn't a prophecy find you? Why didn't Rema find you? Why didn't Revelation find you? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't attract the wrong spirit. Tell your neighbor, don't attract the wrong spirit. Okay? So in our days of ignorance, we knew how to get along around certain people. 
I'll give you an example. One time I told people, you can't talk about me and I don't know, and it's the truth. It's the truth. I'm not scaring, it's the truth. Some of you have tried it, you know. It's the truth. God knows that, okay? There are these men who went and said, oh, grace, good chivity, grace, grace, preachers. Uh. I said, Lord, I thank you. Okay? In visions, I'm on my bed, I see a man say something. I say, are you sure? Yes. You keep quiet. And I've never openly said these men do, okay? One of the lead critics of the ministry, his personal assistant, quit the ministry and came. And told me, I've come to confess how they used to send me. You see, I didn't call the guy. I didn't even want him to. I didn't ask for anything from him. But somehow the Lord will that I know. Do you understand what I'm saying? But even with his witness, I told him, oh, okay. I left it at that. Some of the things he said I knew were true. Some, most of them. You understand what I'm saying? But because he's the Lord's anointed, I left it at that. But I could have destroyed him by what I had. It was enough. Trust me, it was enough. Are you hearing? It was what? It was enough to destroy him. But now we can't have carnal battles. Katinayad is even there going to the newspapers. Okay, you come and then we get witnesses and they sit in front of TV like some men do. And then they start to say, tell us what they, then they, you start fighting. You, do you see that kind of nonsense? Praise the Lord. Some of you are lawyers. When you get to issues that are spiritual, okay, and God has not told you anything about the case, leave it. Leave it. Why? Because your interests are obvious. They are your brethren in the Lord. They are your brethren in the what? In the Lord. Because you see, this is how men will know we are the disciples. The Bible says, because we love. There's a difference between being a church Christian and a disciple of God. This is how men know we are disciples, because we love. There is something love can't do. It can't seek to reproduce another record of what it has had and not yet proved. That is not love. Love covers the multitude. Okay? If it is too hard for you, walk away. I mean, don't sit in the council where you find men scorning on anybody you regard with an anointing. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will grow. I promise you, you will grow. I promise you, you will grow. Faster than many people. Some people, it's not devils, it's not over praying, it's those small things. The Bible says in the book of Solomon, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. They're not big foxes, they're small foxes. Small things destroy. The things that destroy salvation and life of a Christian are very small things, they're not very big. There's right now somebody who has failed to get healed because they refuse to forgive. Up to today you've failed to get healed. The day you ever let go of that person, I promise you'll be healed. But you think it's devils, you're over praying and fasting, you're going to pray a mountain, forgive your mother, forgive your father. Forgive that guy who hurt you so bad. It's the small things that we know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyhow, before I go deeper, you can never walk in an anointing you don't respect. Never. It's a way you learn. That's why there are certain people we can't lay hands on. Not because we don't want to. And we don't need to lay hands, by the way, so to speak. There are certain people we just can't lay hands on. Not because we don't want to. Not because we must not. Not because we are not, you, you understand? But there are certain people we just can't lay hands on. Because it's useless. Whether you lay or you don't lay, it's useless. Do you understand what I'm going to tell you? We don't lay hands hastily. The Bible tells us. Don't just go laying hands on everybody. You don't lay hands on everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Neither should everybody lay hands on you. Some of you, you have stocked mixtures of seed in the spiritual imbalance. But in the flesh you're cutting. Name spiritual imbalance. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If, I, if we pastor you for one year and you make a certain confession, it's enough to know that somebody laid hands on you. you listen, you, we can't teach you the word for one year and you say certain words. There are certain words you can't say. But when those words come out, I don't know where you picked it from, but you picked it. In none of those conferences of breakthrough. <laughs> I'll give you an example. You can't be in this ministry for one year and go to another place. Hmm? Are you hearing me? Okay, I'm just giving you an example. One year, you can't be one year here and harbor those radical religion things. You can't. After that one year, at least you have those funny things, those funny spirits you intentionally yield to, like gossip. You know, over wound, over bitterness, those, those were simple ones. But by the time people see you throwing tantrum and, <laughs> and then you go for a certain delivery service and then you throw a metal and you are under us for one year. <laughs> ah! I never knew you. <laughs> Hallelujah! It can't be. Tell your neighbor it can't be. That's why I told people. If you ever enter this ministry and spend three months in this ministry and go and feel like you have not added on anything on your life, leave. Don't even say bye. <laughs> Don't talk about the gambling thing. No. Again, the tire get Go. Because that means we never did anything in your life. Do you get where I'm coming from? It is impossible. Unless you're just an occasional visitor. Go go move it away. But when you get out of the cancer class to the people who say I am religiously attending service, you can't attend service for three months consecutively and leave this ministry. You can't. Stay just a walk. I'm not speaking you proudly. No, I speak because I know. It's even deeper than believing. I know. Because everyone can go back and testify and say, I learned to do this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So Aaron and Moses, uh, sorry, Aaron and Miriam, see Moses marrying a Kushite woman because there was a particular law that they should marry from their own tribe. And their own people. You understand? Remember from the fathers of the faith, the Abrahams and everyone. They were married from their own people. Everyone was married from their own people. Now certain people looked at the experiences of the set rules and patterns to think that that was the only way and God would direct. Listen, God can change pattern in love. And this was an idea of Moses saw a Kushite and he landed. Whether he should marry from his own or not, he saw a Kushite and he landed. Period. God said it's okay. Marry. Now Aaron and Miriam are saying, no. God, not for you, get enough for you. Nothing come, you get enough. You understand? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord calls them out of the tent of meeting. He stands at the door of the tent and asks them, aren't you afraid? By the time God asks you and you are afraid, it means he's even shocked you and not. <laughs> listen, listen, aren't you afraid to sit in a conversation that engages, involves Pastor Isaiah? Aren't you afraid? You just speak blatantly. You, papa, you, you, somebody say, Papa, and then they start conversation about your Papa. You're not even afraid to sit. You just sit and listen. You, you're not afraid. You're not afraid. Now, people are laughing at Aaron and Miriam, but they are what? Because they are New Testament creatures. The other ones were doing it in a soulish realm. And Miriam, being the older girl, probably she did it by reason of being a weak soul female. 
But now you, you're not weak, so female. In Christ, there is either male or not. You, you're a spirit. We, you, you mature than soulish realm. It's true that majority of the women can't keep quiet. But when you got born again, you left that class. You left it. Nobody can stereotype you anymore. It's like people say, all men cheat. Yes, but when we got born again, your husband doesn't cheat. Do you understand? You can't stereotype. Do you understand? You can't stereotype. So, there are people we can trust. They are women, but we don't regard them as women. And the people I have seen in spirit, they are not women in spirit. They are mature men in the spirit. <laughs> Do you understand? But there are some who have stayed babes. It's inexcusable. And it's worse if a man. <laughs> I tell that one again, it's even worse. <laughs> Atiba was pasaiza nga no mu tsajja afuzo mukazi You understand where I'm coming from? There are certain things we, that are not our business. For me even at my workplace I see girls quarrel and then I realize where it's coming from. I come out of their mess na siri ngi byam. Then I know hey, hey, hey. you know for us men quarrel from me. Do you agree? Where you quarrel from? Why didn't you greet me? Starts from there. End of story. To be mad, I've vented out my frustration. My issue is the ego. I felt abused. That's all. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's not how women think. She can't say, why didn't you greet me? No. She, she would say, seven times now. <laughs> you have not been... You even kept count. Ogwaso kaya gubala, ogwo kubili na gubala, ogwo kusatu na gubala, ogwo kuna na gubala. Yakuso nyiwa na ya gubala. In her heart. Am I lying? Some are even distinctive with dates. 12 October. <laughs> Do you remember? I swear men don't keep those things. We don't remember for a... We don't. We don't. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, let bygones be bygones. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I refuse to stereotype you. It's like I can come, I'll give you an example. I can be at church and then somebody, and then I hear a certain church member say something about another. And I'm shocked and say, hey, why did she say this? Okay? I won't come to you directly and tell you, Miriam, why did you talk about Helen? No, no, no. Because I realize I'm dealing with a demon on you. I'm not dealing with me. I'm dealing with a demon on you. That's more serious. I'll first go to the presence of God. God, what's wrong with this Christian? And for some, he tells you this one is mature. The mature one, I know, was a mistake. And anything that is a mistake can be corrected. I go by scripture to correct Then I'll speak to God, and then God tells me, no, this one, it's not a place of mistake. This one is a place of she yields to the Spirit, and she loves it. That one, unless they stop loving it, even if you correct, you can only break. You don't waste your time. So that silence would mean you're even keeping them by comfort. Because you can do something at somebody, now talk to us. Papa! You understand? Now look at Yeah. Some, some, and somebody even brought and says, did I ever say it? But you remember in your head you said it. Now I'm putting more devils on you. 
Now if, if you're that weak kind, I leave you, I say, ah, she go to Gambo. You can't pass the law of the Philistine. It's a shortcut. But you feel war and repent. So I make you run the longer run. I wait for you after your 40 days of dryness. Until one day when the opportune moment is very clear, you're humble enough to listen. I talk to you. And you're restored. If you still refuse, I let you go your 40 days. But you're wasting time. Hallelujah. That's why if you have ever spoken about a man or a woman of God, take one second, five seconds from now and repent. Tell God, I will not do it again. I'm sorry. If you can't go to that man and woman and tell them, I am sorry. Don't tell them what you say, they might hang you. But tell them, just tell them, I am sorry, they will understand. And if they are mature, they must forgive you. Now the Lord comes to Miriam and tells them, well, when I speak to my guys, anybody prophet, I come by two realms, visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. But that's not how I speak to Moses. That means there's a place of humility, yeah, that transcends a man's hearing beyond a vision and dream. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? He says, when I speak to them, I speak, I, when I speak to prophets, I speak to them vision and dreams. But when I'm speaking to my servant, Moses, I don't speak to him that way. He has the run on my entire house. He has the run on my entire house. I can give an example of probably me and Pastor Isaiah. When Pastor Isaiah is speaking to me, he can't speak to me like anybody in this building. He can't. He can't. When he's speaking to me, he tells me everything. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? But I had to earn a trust for him to talk to me about everything. And that was a place of humility. Do you know that? There is nothing Pastor Isaiah can't tell me. And I'm telling you the truth. He knows that. I know him. Like he knows me. Do you understand? If there is anything, I have access to anything about him. Why? Because there is a way I see him and there is a way he has grown to understand how I see him. There are things he can't tell anybody in the world, but he will tell me. That's why some of you, if you notice, you, you say, oh, he tells it. You are the one to go and talk to the person. It doesn't mean he can't finish it. No, no, no. No, he's more mature than I. He has been in the spirit longer than I. He knows more than I. Do you understand? Do you understand? But there's a place of hand in his heart. And not everybody's there. Do you get what I'm trying to tell you? Because that kind of submission, that kind of submission, submits plan. That is why you women, when you get married, you will see, the more humble you are, the more the man will submit his plans, like he's not the head of the house. Small things. Do you want to tell a humble woman? That's a woman who will go to her husband and tell him, what do you want us to eat? And the man will say, you, what do you want to eat? That's a humble woman. Right from, let's go for a meal, where? You choose, no, you choose. The moment you see that, you understand? By the time the head takes authority to give you the audacity to choose, he is testing you to a certain level. For women who can't be trusted, you must decide, decide everything about her because you can't trust any of her decisions. No, sir, you could answer to me. You can't answer me. I tell you one day you'll get married. I speak as an apostle. Praise the Lord Jesus. Soon I'm bringing a sermon on the angels of the woman. You wait, it's coming. I, because the Bible says she ought to have power on her head for the sake of the angels. There is certain ministry that can't work with you if you're an unsubmitted woman. They can't, even if you pray and fast 
the results on you show. If you have money, you won't have peace. If you have peace, you won't. There's, there will always be something missing about you. Always. Listen, for example, should I go in it? The Bible, eh? <laughs> listen, the Bible is very clear. Listen, the Bible is very clear on how to run marriage, okay? That is if you fall to follow the terms of the Bible, okay? If you're not going to follow the terms of the Bible, follow your other terms. Okay? Follow your other terms. But if you're going to follow the terms of the Bible, do you know, like Paul says, women ought to keep silent. Hmm? You remember that? Now, gender activists. No, he's not saying that. He's not saying that. That's why that particular point, if you read the scripture very well, he's not talking to unmarried people. He's talking to married people. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll prove that. Let's read. Let your women keep silence. Let your women. Who's women? Okay. Probably. Keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under. Under. As also says. Next line. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their... Do you see he's not talking about unmarried? He's talking about wives. It's not a place of saying that your wife won't be a preacher. No, 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 no. That is out of the world. Come on, we're not preaching that. We're saying... I'll give you a simple wisdom. I think this is... We're in a car, for example. Okay? I'm driving. Okay? Pastor Isaiah is seated with his wife. And then Pastor Isaiah makes a statement by reason of ignorance. And then Mama Deborah says, No, 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 Sebonetta. Tetugana, Neda, Sebonetta, Neda, Neda. Ah, 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 sir, Neda, Neda, Neda. Listen, at that point, the point is no longer that Pastor Isaiah says something wrong. Yeah. The point is you have removed the cover off your head. That's the point. The point at that point is no longer whether Pastor Isaiah say, said something wrong. You should have known he was giving a church setting. And at that particular point he's saying any existence of anybody outside the two of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? If she disagrees with him, let him say his statement. Let me get out of the car and when there are two she says, Musu, let him teach you get there. In humility, let's begin from there, biblically. She kept silent when he spoke. Are you hearing me? But when there were two, she took the place and said, Sir, I don't think this is right. I think this is how it's supposed to be. And then he says, No. At that particular point, understand, he's still your cover. Right? If you're going to get married to that kind of man, tell him, I will support you. If you still insist, let's go north. I will support you. Let's go north. If it be thy will. You remember Jesus. You understand? If it's possible, take this cup of suffering off me. But if it be your will. Sarah knew that. Get rid of Hagar. You don't re remember. He didn't get Hagar here. The housemate. Everyone. Then she. Scriptures are clear. She left everyone away. Then she went to Abraham. Get rid of the slave woman and the child. Abraham head says, No. Sarah, your mother. Are you hearing me? Your mother. She says, Okay, so. Now there's a thick thing, Kari, she's stupid. <laughs> Hmm? 
You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Some, I'll tell you the truth. And it's as though, it's as though, some, she won't say it that way, but she'll speak to make sure even the maid knows. The maid is recording. Are you hearing me? Then you go through your children. Oh man, I'm a Listen, you're not married to that maid. You're not even married to your kids. Are you hearing me? They will go, you'll still stay with Mr. Black. You understand? So you better not listen. When you're under power, watch your mouth. The essence of submission is a, a wise mouth. That is that nothing else. The submitted spirit knows how it should speak. When it fails, the candle in the night, the Bible says, for her candle does not burn out in the night. Sarah knows she can fix it by night. She goes to God and tells him, I didn't break the rank. I didn't break the rank. God leaves his place and comes by reason of a woman who didn't break the rank. And then he goes to the man who he knows clearly submits to him. He tells him, listen to your wife. That was it. That was it. If Pirate's wife was not as submitted, she would not have told Pirate, and Pirate listens to serve Jesus. It can't be. Do you see where I'm coming from? For the sake it no that's coming. For the sake of the what? The angels that cover you. The Bible says the woman ought to have power on her head. She, whether for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nothing else. Because of the angels. Because if you believe in angels that minister to you financially as a woman, as a lady, and anything that represents you, those ones that have to see you childbearing, those ones that see you pregnant, those ones that take you to, to save you from accidents, those ones that save, save you from slander, those ones that save you from being fun and growing old before time. Listen. Have power on your head. Know who you report to. He might be wrong, but he's your husband. Are you hearing me? Support it. Let him hit the rock. Trust me. If he has made the mistake, but he remembers the wife supported, the next time he will ask. And by the time a man asks you, what should I do? No, you're submitted. But by the time your man tells you what he wants you to do, there is a point where you killed it. You never know where, but there is a point where you killed it. But then you find born again Christians in a car, husband and wife. No! Who, who is married to who? Who is the husband? One of you must be the husband. Listen, you will not both be. Okay, gender balance. Marry according to the terms of the Bible. But if you marry to the terms of the world and still think God will intervene, listen, angels are pissed off already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that gentle and meek spirit, the Bible says, which in the eyes of God is, Priceless. Gentle and meek. Not nice nose. Not body. No. Gentle and meek. Not nice English and a good family image. No. Gentle and meek. Not whether she has flu or sinuses. No. Gentle and meek, which in the eyes of God is priceless. For the women of old endowed themselves this way. If you want, listen, this is the oldest way women keep it. Even as Sarah addressed her husband as my Lord, not no, not Michael, <laughs> not Isaiah, <laughs> not Swim. No, 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 no. Okay, if you want to add on, put that in master, but it's your master. If you don't want, it's okay. 
If you don't want to what? It's okay, that's your problem. Your fellow women will cook. You're going to grow older in that cut. It will kill you. Every time they do ton, 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 it will kill you. I told you. He's, listen. He's your master. He kills it. If you don't want, go to God and tell him, make me a celibate. You be tough. There is no way, there is no way, there is no way a guy can just come and talk to prison. You, you see what I'm trying to tell you? Your, your ma listen, okay, it might be hard, but that's the truth. Okay, look at Jesus and us. Isn't he our master? Isn't he our master? But look at the man who is submitted to God and the Spirit. Every time he wants the spirit to move. Because the faith you have toward God, to the levels of your submission to his word, that's the place of humility, okay? It's how now he responds to be moved to a place where even if he willeth not, for your own sake he will move. That is why certain people can move the spirit anytime and certain people can't. When Spirit of God was boldly tells you, if the spirit doesn't move, I move him. Do you know where he came from? That is the most humble statement in the world. When you find a woman who can tell you, if my husband has refused Mundekere, he will allow. That's a submitted woman. Because she can, she can change him anytime, anywhere. She goes to him as her master. Are you hearing me? Seeking for him to hear out. Look, look at Esther. And the other opposite thing, we call it Vashti. The indifferent thing. Vashti, I've made a party. I've also made a party. I'm talking to you guys who Simanya, you're in the heart of Christ. Simanya, your, your husband. Simanya, in what? Simanya. A success makes a party. Vashti also makes her own party. How can two married people go in two different ministries? How? My husband prays from what? Tell her, tell me, I pray from here. Listen, we can get somebody to replace your chair or pray him here. But be with your master. Chizibu, we will miss you, but be with your master. When you are getting married, you knew that he was from a different church. Go with him. Go with him. You made that decision alone. That is why the same people who are clear, not because they don't want to marry outside, but because they don't want to get to a point where they are conflicting their seed. Grace, low, grace, low, grace. How do you sit in a car to a legal church when you've been raised in the grace? Do you see where I'm coming from? The moment you get the guy, find out if he's legal. If he's legal, I swear it won't work. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, if you love him so much, why are him with grace? Because grace and law can't be married. You will quarrel from first death to second death. You won't understand each other at night. You don't know why he doesn't understand you. He also doesn't know why he doesn't understand you. But sometimes you seem like you're stubborn and arrogant. How can you rebuke him? But it's, the thing is simple. These are two seeds trying to create one seed. Chisoboka. That's why you be careful who you marry. Are you hearing me? I know the man who was given a job in Kenya. The family was in South Africa. The wife told him I'm not leaving South Africa. <laughs> Where the head goes, the body goes. Because if he goes with the head and the body stays, trust me, he will need a body. I'm not supporting don't get me wrong. I said he will need. I just said he will need. I don't know how mature he will understand what I mean, but I said he will need a body. Body better go with the head. 
It's like going where Christ is. Again, they go to a direction. It cannot happen. It can. This is where I'm coming from. Now, verse 2 is doing a party. Husband is doing party. What? what, what? Listen. Listen. When that kind of woman understands this concept, when you hear your husband pray, open your mouth. Even if you don't feel like, fake it and just suck it up, 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 fake it. If you say, I'm going to Arua tomorrow, go to God and say, God, if it is to be possible. Then after, clean your eyes and tell him, what time are we leaving? My Lord. My Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Your husband is not your father. The two of you are one. Pack your, you, you say it for better for what? Are you hearing me? You, you said it at that altar. You, you are the one who he did. You are. Listen. When you make that decision and say, I'm ready to marry a pastor. The young girl was bringing me nonsense. He said, Pastor, he has always out. I asked her, what did you marry? You, listen. If you want bankers who don't pray, doctors who are born again, they are there. They are there. Deep anointed businessmen. But the moment you marry a man or God, believe me, tomorrow they will call him to sweden at six. Shut up! Pack his bags! <laughs> then they started to say, Kurira, some men, they leave their wives and then they go to ministry. Listen, listen. Don't marry a preacher, he will leave you and go to ministry. Why? Because he married ministry before you. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Listen, I'll give you an example. Some of you are still not even dating anything. The Gapitas are going to come later. You are in love with Jesus. Listen, you understand? The days when you didn't have transport, you came to Mukono walking in love with Jesus. You understand? The days when nobody said anything to you with your fake hair, you are in love with Jesus. That phone bag, you are in love with Jesus. That funny hair style, those shoes, those smelly dresses, those socks you borrowed, you are in love with Jesus. Now, listen. God comes before even your kawaii. Your husband. I don't know that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. That is why I'm telling I'm sorry, heart of Christ, if you have visited, I'm sorry. But if your heart of Christ, when he's dating you, be clear. Will you refuse me to pray? Why? Because prayer got me here. You did get me here. Prayer got me here. Will you refuse me to pray? The moment he says, uh, we shall, Mugai, brother, no nyabu, no nya class, that's class. There are many, there are many, who, who are free with praying anywhere, anyhow. Are you hearing me? But if you will refuse, be very clear. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So the man puts the dinner. Man, a party. Vashti also does what? Does a party. You understand? She, remember, the Bible says, when he made the party, he called her out to see her beauty. But Vashti didn't actually see it that way. She saw it like she had her own party to attend. That's that indifference. She's trying to prove your beauty. She's thinking it's disrespecting your progress.
was die packt. Esp. Esp. My Lord, if it pleases you, let me throw you. Did you see? Esther, Esther was clever. <laughs> did, did you see how she addressed the king? My Lord, if you find it pleasant in your sight, it's you. Now, come on. Vashti Esther. And you pick a Vashti. That's why I want some men. I mean, if, if, you, if the woman is Vashti from day one, don't waste your time. In marriage, it will be worse. Oh. I don't want to know why even I'm speaking this thing. Is somebody going to get married? Listen. If Vashti is the way she is, listen, he, I know, I know he knew her. I just know he knew her. But he went after her beauty. I just know. He knew Vashti. I knew. That's why when he brings her out, he could only show beauty, nothing else. He didn't tell her, come and give a speech. She didn't have the brain. <laughs> tell your neighbor, don't marry beauty. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> marry the anointing. <laughs> That's all she was. But Esther was more than beauty. Three days of fasting. <laughs> Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you understand what I'm telling Because I, I look at some such people who say, I'm dating this guy but her. The things of God is very far. I look at them and I'm thinking, your head is very far. <laughs> he, he, okay, he loves God. He tries. <laughs> if you're here and you're a man, grow. I'm telling you, if you're going to marry any woman from heart of Christ, Better be deep. Read your Bible. Fake prayer. Fake fasting. But please be deep. Please. Why? Because you're the head. Nothing else. You're the head. You're the head. If, if you're not gifted to preach like she's a preacher, be mature enough by the Spirit to support her. Two ways. But you can't be indifferently immature. You can't bring a mature guy. Immature Pharaoh. When you're coming to, you go, I'm sorry, Elijah, they brought you here. I'm sorry. I didn't intend it. I didn't intend it. If you want to marry her, start growing program. See Pastor Isaiah, tell him how can I grow. Me don't see me. See Pastor Isaiah. He's a married one. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, Esther doesn't come into this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Esther has not shown her people, no the kindred, no Mordecai. Let's, let's continue. I wanted to show you something. And Mordecai walked every day and what was... Uh -huh. Now, one of the main stunts comes in the king's affairs after she had blah, 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 six months, six years, all that. Uh, 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 I'm, not, I'm looking at that part where, where Haman plots to kill Mordecai. Right? And then Esther goes to the king to speak to the king, asking him for a time. Right? And then the king, he told her, even if you want up to half of my kingdom, I shall give you. He wasn't mad. He was ministering to submitted women. Now, the principle of that half was, if, if you don't understand, the principle of that half was, it's her portion to the full by the respect of the fact that she accords her real role and truth of a wife. That's why in divorce they split stuff by half. You see where I'm coming from? Although some people just married to divorce, but the idea, the idea that, that the king had about this lady, yeah, was Esther entered the relationship a submitted woman. And that's why I warn you, it is not right for a man to cheat on his wife. It is not right. It's not right. But the moment you realize you have a vast spirit on you, be afraid. Be very afraid. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, for the sake of these angels, it, the English, in fact, if you read the Greek, it's as though Muruganda Bagamba, Yamba Buyambi Bamaraika, Bayambi. It's as though they are seeking you to help them. Help them. Have power on your head. Because if you don't listen, you kill a certain pattern that you carry a particular gift. Yeah? But it corrupts communication. Have you been around women who are not truly submitted? It doesn't matter how prophetic they are. That's why the biggest number of prophetesses are losing in marriage. Because they have this hope I'm hearing God. You go through the story of many women. Okay, start from your life and your neighbors and friends. Look at the most prophetic girls. If they are not submitted, you see. They can't. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Because there's a place where they claim they hear God. I used to know the girl, she, she knows who God has appointed, but her life is funny. But for her, she hears for other people's marriages and weddings. If you're immature, you'll hate me. First here for your marriage. After hearing for your marriage, now enter Rachel's marriage and also hear for her. But you, you fail to hear for your marriage. You're hearing for Pastor Isaiah. You're hearing for... You, you understand? Don't hear. Don't hear for another man's marriage before you hear for yours. That's the place where you think you hear God most. And then in the end, you corrupt a small statement of corruption. Just a corrupt wisdom comes out of the spirit of the prophetess, which is actually a true prophet. Why? Because of the hair. Okay, let me give you a bigger picture. Look at the family setting. The husband is the head of the house. Hmm? Look, at, look at the girls who were raised in family where either their father wasn't there or who was less significant than the mother or they never saw him at all. They have character issues with men. Always. Always. My sisters, by being raised by my father, there are certain things they can't set the man's ego. Because the power over their head taught them a certain language. You understand? Look at people who either weren't with their fathers, or their fathers were insignificant, or their fathers weren't there. Or the fathers were there and they used to exchange. A woman can't exchange with her father and not fail in marriage. You saw Luca. You look at you. You go back to you go back to family setting. Look at those cousins, those sisters, or oh, yourself. Those things, daddy, no, daddy, me, you never know. Daddy, you watch all of those women who usually fought with their fathers. They are not married, or if they are married, they are not happy because they frustrated the power. Because that's the fathering spirit. God gives you another chance to find fathers in the spirit. And you disrespect them. And you say, I'm going to get married. I swear. <laughs> You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. <laughs> Listen, you think you're going to disrespect Pastor Isaiah, your spiritual father, and respect your husband. Cannot happen. Even God would be unfair. No. Listen. Fathers who are not there, fathers who are less significant than the, the wife, in the places where mothers were more of influence than, than the father, or who they never saw at all, or who never had a relationship with their daughters, look at the way they are raised, majority of them. Now, it's not your fault, and I'm not blaming you for that, but do something. Seek a father. Seek a father. I'm telling you, even if you're old, seek it. It can be too small, but you need it. Because sometimes it's more than just father. It's how men think. You must know how men think. So that you don't waste your, your communication. Many people, that's why they're not married. Not these things of Simania. Because some of you, do you know, do you know the Bible says there's a beauty 
there's a bit that 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 is folly. It's foolish. There's a foolish beauty. There's a kind of deceiving beauty. Some people look at themselves in the mirror and say, "Nae wa agweta sovola ko." Kwalunji wa mwana kwe. No kamala. Kare, you be hot alone. Because I was once young and I'm old, right? Now I have seen funny women get married straight, but boba fumba. You understand? Big noses, big ears. They are getting married. Fake short, funny women. They are getting married. Mothers are still walking on the street. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, because you you think men see this outside. Listen, if 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 a man still sees the outside, he's lusty. After using you, he'll move on. That's why many of you feel used because they saw your beauty and the guy got excited. After being with you, you got shorter. You walked out. I'm helping you until the man sees you here. You'll never be brown here. I promise. You will never. You will never. Why? Listen. Because you define him. You define him. Anything that he sees in you shortcoming, he won't allow. He won't allow. Listen. You're the bone of his bones. Singular of his plural. That is why many men say, "Don't marry dense cheek." Kwa unkazo mbwabanga musi, there are big chances. Unless wisdom of God. Hey, thank you. That's why the foolish kid, the Bible says, brings shame to the mother, not the father. It's on your side. Now, if you're here and your transcripts are bad. Your UAC is bad. Your UC is bad. Better be deep. That's the only shortcut. He has been made our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification. Fact that you can say in the world I wasn't wise, but in the spiritual things I was wise. Similar. If I produce a kid who's deep spiritual, I don't care whether chemistry is honest. Let them be deep spiritual. They will survive. I know it. Why? Because that wisdom will teach them chemistry, it will teach them physics, it will fit. It will teach. It will feed them. Listen, you can't be anointed and you're not fed. And if you have an anointing that doesn't feed you, go back to your fathers. I want to conclude. I want to conclude. For the sake of the angels. Now, I cannot have raised you. Huh? Now, Miriam is married to Derek. I want Miriam. I had two chats with Miriam. The first chat were in their father's house. I told her the words of marriage. The second time, there was a group of girls. We took her for those. You know those what the bride showers. Bridal shower was one hour of preparing Miriam to be married. Now, if Derek comes and tells me, Miriam, yam, boom, Miriam, <laughs> do you see what I'm trying to tell you? But to prove that I raised the right one, yesterday on radio station, Miriam came great. Married woman left her home. Husband stamped for her to come to Spirit FM and just sit in the open, in the in the studio and pray in tongues. I told her, well, I'm proud. <laughs> Now, Derry can't say, ha, 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 he can't even think it. He can't even think it, you see? But a married woman had time to come and pray in tongues at a radio station. Single things can't even pray in tongues. <laughs> married woman was in November blessing. Single things have a problem praying on Saturday. Why? <laughs> hey! Ah. Uh.
I've spoken a lot. <laughs> Even my sermon. Okay, I'll continue. Tomorrow, you mean it's in the spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might not be responsible of your past, but you can shape the future. If you're a woman here and you've abused your father, I beseech thee by the masters of God, if he's still alive, go call him now, today, after service, and tell him, Dad, I'm sorry. And start to submit under your own father. You will see. You will see. You remember my word. My word serious. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the power in the household draws the character. Draws the character. That is why it's very hard to find a woman whose mother submitted totally and the father loved the woman. And that woman failed in marriage. Cannot happen. That is why even in marriage, the scriptures tell you find the blessings of your father. This is where you're coming from. This is where you're coming from. Get to your feet. Make it now, you're going to pray why. Just raise your hands and say, Lord, we thank you. Because we are humble. We are very humble in spirit. We are very humble in thoughts. Very humble in actions. I decree and declare. I will not fail in marriage. I decree and declare I will not fail in ministry. I decree and declare that I will not sit in the, in the seat of the scornful. I will never abuse your anointed one. I will never backbite your anointed one. I will never scorn at the anointed one. Because I know it's an anointing. Even as a wife, it's an anointing to have a husband. And he is anointed to be my husband. I'll never disrespect him. I'll grow and I'll teach my daughters the same. He shall be my master. In Jesus' name. Now, gentlemen, you say in the name of Jesus, I'll not abuse her submission. I'll not take her for granted. You know why I'm fixing your marriages now? That's that when you get there, you don't waste time. You are in nations, okay? I will not disrespect her. I will love as Christ has loved the church. And regard her an equal heir to the guest. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.